Then she dropped down on the window seat and leaned throbbing temples against the cool glass. She had been on her feet since five that morning, doing everybody's bidding, scolded and hurried by a nervous matron. Mrs. Lippett, behind the scenes, did not always maintain the calm and pompous dignity with which she faced an audience of trustees and lady visitors. Jerusha gazed out across a broad stretch of frozen lawn beyond the tall iron paling that marked the confines of the asylum, down undulating ridges sprinkled with country estates to the spires of the village rising from the midst of bare trees. The day was ended quite successfully, so far as she knew. The trustees and the visiting committee had made their rounds and read their reports and drunk their tea and now are hurrying home to their own cheerful firesides to forget their bothersome little charges for another month. Jirusha leaned forward watching with curiosity and a touch of wistfulness, the stream of carriages and automobiles that rolled out of the asylum gates. In imagination, she followed first one equipage, then another, to the big houses dotted along the hillside. She pictured herself in a fur coat and a velvet hat trimmed with feathers, leaning back in the seat and nonchalantly murmuring, home, to the driver. But on the door sill of her home, the picture grew blurred. 